shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, coming to you with a quick look at a brand new, sort of aftermarket uh, item, Mang's 148th scale US short range air to air missile set. Now, when I came back to the hobby in 2010 or so, they're basically weren't aftermarket options for missiles. I mean, there was the Hasegawa weapon sets from, you know, 44 BC or whenever they came out. And even with, you know, other injection kits, the missiles and whatnot in those Hasegawa sets were starting to look a little bit long in the tooth. But, you know, over time, um, some resin sets have come out, things like that. Edward now has every Sidewinder you could imagine, every pretty much other missile you could imagine in various scales. But they've got a couple issues. They're expensive for one. Um, if you're trying to outfit something that you know is loaded to the brim, you're looking at probably more than the cost of the kit just for the ordnance. Uh, and then when you get to you know the smaller, skinnier missiles like a Sidewinder, for example, in my experience, the resin, especially in 148th and 172nd scale, just at that level of thinness, doesn't have the beef really necessary to sort of hold together all that well. So they're they become extremely fragile. Um, honestly, all the Sidewinder sets I've ever received have come warped. You know, I think part of it is, I've actually got a set sitting right over here. I think part of the situation that's going on is they come packed into these stupid little blister packs and they sit in shipping boxes and things like that and they get hot. And with that, they just kind of warp with the pressure of the foam pushing into them and all that. That's my guess. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a pain in the ass to get, you know, four missiles that you paid $12, $15 for, and every single one of them is bent. Now, you know, straightening resin missiles isn't all that hard. It's a matter of boiling water, putting the missiles in, letting them straighten, but you still have to go through that process, and it's kind of a pain in the ass, and then you still come out the other end with fragile missiles that you have to handle completely with kid gloves and all that sort of stuff. So, it's pretty exciting to uh, to see sort of a renaissance going on in injection molded ordnance. Uh, the best examples that spring to mind from the past couple of years have been what AMK did with the missiles in its MiG-31 kit and Great Wall Hobby and what they've done with both the missiles in the MiG-29 series and in their F-15. And those are one piece gorgeous missiles Frustratingly, they haven't really released them in separate sets yet, but you know, I, I know that uh, AMK is at least planning it with if, if the F-14 ever drops, they're planning it with that. So stuff's coming, but Meng is the first out of the gate, and a lot of these I think came with the um, with the recent F-35 kit, which you know the the RAM detailing that's way overdone kind of killed my interest in that one. But hey, you know, I'm always up for more missiles, especially because I have um, phantom plans going on at the moment with a Zukimura F4S, and it's going to have sidewinders on it, just because, you know, sidewinders. So anyway, I thought, let's crack open this box, take a quick look at how they're approaching the set, uh, how these missiles stack up, and all that good stuff. So let's get to it. So I'm typically not a big fan of going over boxes in reviews. But in this case, the box is actually pretty important. So first, on the front cover here, you've got the missiles that are in the kit. You've got uh, AIM-4C, 4D, 4F, and 4G Falcon missiles. And you've also got a slew of the Sidewinder family. So the AIM-9B, you know, used on early Phantoms and things like that. The AIM-9D, the long nose AIM-9E, the AIM-9LM, the N and P, and the current darling, the AIM-9X. Now that's all well and good. Um, another important thing is that the instructions are on the back of the box. So that's kind of convenient, I guess, but it's also frustrating because it means that you can't just take the missiles out, put them somewhere else, and throw the box away because the instructions are here. Granted, you know, they're fairly self-explanatory. But all the instructions are here, as you can see, a lot of these missiles is like glue one piece in or glue, you know, the fins in. As you get in down the line, though, to certain variants of these missiles, you also get separate seeker heads. 
Now, a cool thing about the separate seeker heads is that they are provided as clear parts. So this isn't super relevant on all of the uh, on all of the sidewinders, but on some of them, you have nice big optical seeker heads. On others, you have shut up compressor. You know, if you look at like the uh, the AIM9 LM, for example, it has that sort of like frosty radome kind of thing going on, where it's has the you know it's it's not transparent, but it has a clearish kind of thing going on with it. So with things like that, or with you know straight up clear seeker heads like on the AIM9X, it's really nice to have these in your pocket, you know, so you're not having to fake a clear part by painting something silver. So kudos to Meng for that. That's really nice to see. Now moving on to other elements of the box, we also have painting instructions, complete with color callouts. I think these are. Um, shit, I don't even know what they are. Is that ammo, maybe, or AK? Whatever. Um, you know, either case, it's nice to have general painting guide, but again, it's on the box, which is kind of annoying, because who wants to just keep the box liner? On this side, you've got sidewinders, you know, the B all the way through the X, the N and P. Um, you'll also see all these numbers here. Those denote decals, and Meng has provided a pretty nice extensive decal sheet here. Uh, these look wonderfully detailed, and even though I'm not generally a big fan of decal stripes for missiles, I think on something like a Sidewinder, you can kind of get a... Seriously? Somewhere else, Ladybug. On something like a Sidewinder, it's small enough that I think you can get away with it. But, you know, nice comprehensive decal sheet lots of stencil data, all that stuff to make the missiles really pop. Now, let's get into looking at some of the missiles. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with some Falcons. Here you go. Now on these, we've got SMA up here, SMB down here. These are two different missile types. So you can see you have to go by the box here to figure out what the hell everything is. So AIM-4C is the SMA, and over here, aim for D is the SMB. Now, construction for these is pretty straightforward. You've got fins, you cut them off, put them on the body. The body's already got the channels right in there. Good to go. Um, you know, looking at these, I see some very minor um, mold seam in there, but nothing too bad. Quick swipe of like a number 10 blade would take that right off something else nice on the ass end you've got actual indentations where the rocket motor would be instead of you know on most injection molded missiles this is just a flat piece so that's nice to see uh, the aim 9d has the spot right here for the clear seeker head nice thing about the way this is done is you can you know paint up this little nubbin here and then you can glue everything in place. And then when you mask off the very tip of the clear seeker head, you can have it look like there's some depth and some elements in here by having this be colored. So that's the Falcons. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the Sidewinders. Now there are two basic approaches to the way they break these down. First of these is what I will call the four off. So these are the ones where all of the fins and the shaft, all the fins are separate from the shaft. So you have this very nicely detailed shaft. This one is the AIM-9LM, as you can see by the fins here. It's got the separate seeker head. It's got the, and you can see it better that way, you know, the opened rear end, just like the AIM-4s, which is nice to see. The detail in this thing is very, very nice. even extending up here into the fins. And I think the only thing that would have been nice to see on top of this, considering that these are all separate, would have been some sort of alignment jig for the rear fins, uh, just to make sure that everything is sitting the way it should be. But at the same time, these indentations look deep enough that that hopefully won't be too much of a problem. So 
Up here again, the AIM 9 LM, down here the AIM 9 D. Both of these still have that clear seeker head. And now we can move on to the other type of sidewinders that are going on here. These are what I am calling the two on, two off. So here we've got an AIM 9E, the long nose type with the clear seeker head. We've got the separate fins and as you can see the fins on these are in keeping with the way that Sidewinders evolved. Um, these are much smaller fins, which I am going to guess might be why we are graced with two already molded onto the shaft. Other than that, they're broadly similar. Um, you know, you've got the opened up rear, you've got the nice detail, you, I mean, the fastener detail in there is fantastic. Unlike the D and LM, which have these little posts that the, uh, that the Ford fins go into, these suckers, come on, the B and the E both have more of a slot. You know, just slight differences in variance, nothing, nothing super fancy. Then looking at the AIM 9 N and P, we've got similar uh, two on two off to the ones we just looked at, the E and the B. However, these retain that post mounting. And if you look at the ones that are actually on the missile, there's daylight between the fin and the shaft, which is pretty cool to see. Other than that, broadly similar. The AIM 9 X, uh, the current top dog in the Sidewinder family has all four fins already molded on. Probably because they're much smaller, so you don't have to worry about short-shotting it. It's got that little humpback ridge thing that the AIM 9X has, and that slots into a trench on the part itself. The, uh, the other thing that sets this one apart is it's got its own separate rear end piece because it's got that sort of crenellated thing going on. So anyway, those are the missiles, and there are quite a lot of them. Will not be short for armament anytime soon. Voila. Okay, now before we wrap this up, I want to take a quick look at the Ming AIM-9E compared to an Edward resin example. As you can see, um, <laughs> this one is just like all Edward Sidewinders, warped. Lovely. But if you set it down, you know, in, in this general vicinity here, it's tough to see with the, you know, missing the, the warhead. And this thing's poor stuff as being a pain in the ass. But they're generally pretty close in dimension. In terms of detail levels, well, you know, I mean, let's let them speak for themselves. I mean, honestly, I think the Edward has the more delicate fins going on, but at the same time, it's all, the detail level on the Mang almost looks like it comes out ahead in this regard and same with the the strapping on this on the shaft I mean they're pretty damn close so if I had to make a judgment call I would say you're really not missing much going with these instead of resin okay so that was a quick look at Meng's uh, sidewinder and Falcon missiles in their short range US missile set for 148 scale. So overall verdict, um, honestly, I love these things. Um, you know, it's nice to have good high quality injection molded mi missiles because, you know, the, the resin ones are nice, but they've got enough little inconveniences that they are kind of a pain in the ass. Um, you know, again, we've got the, the droopiness of warped resin on these skinnier missiles. You've also got the fragility of these things. You know, these fins can snap very easily. 
Uh, the rear cleanup is always a pain in the ass. Get out of its way here. Come on, folks. The rear cleanup there is always a pain in the ass because you've got to remove it without damaging the fins and you've got the rocket space back in the back that you have to drill out. I mean, it's, you know, totally doable, but just one of those tedious things. And having a missile that is, I would say, 95%, if not 100% of the way there in terms of detail matching the resin, and it's already got the back drilled out. You don't have to worry about warping. It's tougher, which means you can you know, drill into it to put little pins in for mounting better. There's a lot of upsides to that. Plus, it's got the clear seeker heads, which, depending on the variant of missile you're building, is a godsend. Um, I remember when I was building the Kitty Hawk Viper raging at the Hellfires they threw in there that didn't have clear seeker heads because one of the defining looks of most Hellfires is that big old glass lens right on the front. And that's something you don't want to rep you don't want to replicate with paint. I mean, you want a clear part there. So having the clear seeker heads really clears that up on pun not intended, clears that up on these missiles. Shut up compressor. And yeah, overall, I'm pretty impressed. Um, I would definitely buy a set or two of these to have in stock for several future builds instead of spending, you know, the twelve to fifteen dollars for a set of four warped Edward Sidewinders. Um, that's pretty much that. Um, I'm not going to say highly recommended because I haven't built them and used them yet and I haven't played with the decals to see how they work out. But so far, definitely impressed and I think for the $18 that I scored all these missiles for, and I think there are four of each. Uh, this is where we're going to test my math skills here. So we've got six, ten. 40 missiles total um, in the set. You know, 40, so you're looking at 50 cents each. That's not bad compared to the four missiles for 12 to $15 that you're getting with resin, um, where they're, you know, they're into like the, the, uh, you know, $3, three to $4 a piece range. So, just from a value standpoint, the main set is also pretty damn nice. So with that, I'm going to sign off and uh, get back to work on the Flogger. And until then, uh, happy modeling.